All right, so uh, let's talk about something else that I don't really give a shit about. Um, Kayla Harrison made her debut at 300 and looked sensational. She did exactly what I said she was going to do. She made light work of Holly Holm. It was a star chin. Um, naturally, she called for a title shot, and we also predicted that. And I think rightfully so. I think at the, at the point of her career that she's at, it makes sense. And I think that the way that she came in and performed, she's going to want to look to get to that title fight as soon as possible. She's thinking legacy. Mm -hmm. Now, more importantly, um, in terms of what came out of that, is we heard rumblings from Nunes that she might come back and get in there. Now, I think I know how you feel about this because you've spoken about it before, but I wanted to get your thoughts on it to see if you've changed your mind. Do you think Amanda Nunes should end her gardening leave, gardening leave and put her GOAT status on the line for a potential matchup with Kayla Harrison. Um, so, if I'm Amanda Nunes, I got to weigh the pros and the cons. Like, if I beat Kayla Harrison, you know, if I'm Amanda Nunes, if I beat Kayla Harrison, what does that do to my resume? Does that boost my resume? Yeah, a little bit. Or does that just make her seem like a fraud? Because she's been outside of the organization. She beat a 40-year-old um, former champion and got a title shot type of thing. Like, is it a fraud check? Like, is it not going to really help Amanda's legacy? Like, she's got to weigh that. And in my opinion, to this point, like, Kayla would have to do a few more things. She'd have to go and win the belt maybe defend the belt more dominantly and then maybe but if i'm amanda like do i want to wait that long not really i mean it's just something about leaving competition not you know having that constant uh um fire inside of you and you try to reignite the furnace like it doesn't often work that way i mean we just talked about you know earlier a couple of people you know in john jones i talked about gsp who were able to come off a of long layoffs and win, but we had those same questions for them in coming back. I, I would have the same question, like, what for what? This isn't new. You're going back to get a belt. You already you got like five of them at the house, so you're going back to get a belt that you already got. I mean, just to beat somebody who may or may not be on your level. And from our perspective, yes, her her wrestling is elite um from the looks of it but if i'm amanda like why for what i wouldn't i wouldn't come back if i were her i wouldn't do it yeah i had a feeling you might stick to your convictions on this one um and it's not going to surprise you that i feel the total opposite of course i think course. she i think she should come back like firstly like i thought her retirement came too early you know, she was only 34. She looked great against Aldana. It made sense. Like, as Spencer pointed out when we spoke to him about it, she's beaten every single woman that has held a belt at bantamweight and featherweight. Mm -hmm. I I'll admit, like, the, the latter was a little bit less impressive because featherweight was never a division. And I think the double champ status thing is something on her side that I don't put too much stock in. The only reason why I think it deserves some credit is because obviously for the woman she beat it for she beat for it beating mm -hmm. cyborg means something because that woman's a murderer mm -hmm. so for that perspective the title means something but outside of that it doesn't in my opinion the, the fact remains is that women's mma wasn't in great shape when amanda nunez was there and it's in far worse shape now and i think like based on what we saw from kayla and how good she looks I think she's going to beat the fuck out of every fighter at Bantamweight. I think she beats Aldana. I think she beats Pena. I mean, obviously. Uh, I think she fucks up Raquel Pennington as well. Now, when she does this, and she does it convincingly, the voices are going to get louder. Is Amanda the greatest anymore? Is there a... I think they will. I think that's what gonna what's going to happen. And I personally don't give a fuck about her legacy. Like, I want to mm -hmm. see the best fighting the best. Or I don't care about her risking her legacy. 
<clears throat> there is nothing exciting whatsoever about women's MMA right now. We've maybe got or in the works for it. We've maybe got the prospect of Zhang going up to fight Grasso. But, you know, judging what we saw at 300 and as great as I think Whaley is, she's so small. And I think Grasso would be the rightfully strong favorite, as would Shevchenko. So while it is a fight I want to see her go for, I, I'm less excited about it after seeing 300. Like, I don't think Kayla has any trouble with anyone whatsoever at Bantamweight. But with Amanda, there'll be genuine intrigue there. I think it would be a great matchup. And I think some people would pick Kayla. For that fight i think if nunez comes back and beats her she's undeniable i mean people would say she's undeniable now but if kayla gets some momentum about her and starches people in the same way that she did people are going to start asking and then when you decide to come back you're older it's too late if, if i was her right now i would start training in secret in the background let kayla harrison do her thing train anyway She's had a year off. I'd get her, I'd get your ass in the gym. I'd give Kayla time to fuck up Raquel and get the belt. And then when she calls her out, you out for it, be ready. This isn't a 40 year old woman we're talking about. And no one shits on women's MMA more than me. You know, I enjoy doing it as well. I'd be gassed for this. <laughs> I'd be gassed for this. And I think like at the end of the day, you've got a limited window to make money in this sport. I'm sure Nunez has made a decent amount of money. But if she could come back and get another mil or two, end the debate once and for all, bring the spotlight to MM to women's MMA where it really needs it. I think she should do it. I think people need to stop worrying about their legacies and start taking chances. And I think like there's nothing else to look forward to other than maybe one or two little matchups here and there. This would bring eyeballs and it would it would elevate women's MMA. And it does, it does become... It, the thing is, you've got to let Kayla get the belt first. Yeah, but if I was her, really. and she's got some work... But I think she gets it next. And we'll talk so, about that. Yeah. Um, I don't disagree with you, though. I don't disagree. And it would be great for women's MMA. Mm -hmm. um, but from Amanda's perspective, I just... I have the same, you know, the same concern that I I was saying before the Jamal Hill fight. And I was like, I just don't know if he's ready to be back. I have the same feel for Amanda. Like, I don't know if you really want to. I'd assume go. she's still training. And I think the time off would, would, would have been, so. I mean, she's only been off for nine months. Yeah. I would and I mean, it's training. a, like I said, it's a, it could be good for her in that she's, if she starts training now. Mm -hmm. She could be ready in nine months. Because that's what the timeline I figured would work. Because I figure Kayla gets a shot, what, three or four months from now? I would assume. Mm -hmm. And the first thing she's going to do when she wins that belt, she's going to say, what are you saying, Amanda? Yeah, she is. Because she's, she's that kind of person. That's true. She she goes for the big, yeah, and she true. knows it would be huge. She, they, could head, they, could headline a, they could headline a number card. Or at least co made they it. They could cut. They could cut. I mean, those two. I mean, they could headline. They could. They could headline. Those two could headline. They could. One hundred percent. The intrigue mm -hmm. would be there, and I think they. I know Dana's already talked about wanting to do it, and I. I would have a lot. I mean, I respect Amanda Nunes a lot already, but if she, was willing to be like, all right, this woman is legit scary because it would be the legit the most scary person she's fought since Cyborg. Mm -hmm. it would just be i think it would be a huge mark on her as a as a as a car i mean again she's got nothing to prove i'm not saying that yeah but the balls to come back against somebody that good looking you know i think yeah. it would mean a lot and i think i think again for women's mma i think it needs it that's where i, can't I stay disagree. can't disagree with that yeah 